This is a Fox News alert. The blizzard of 2015 slamming Boston. It is not over yet, and it gets worse. Major flooding, more snow still targeting Massachusetts, making travel dangerous and nearly impossible. And it's not just New England. Still reeling from the winter storm, parts of New York trying to dig out and stranded airline passengers coast to coast. We have live team coverage from the hardest hit places with enormous mounds of snow piled up all across the city of Boston, the same site, seen at towns and communities all over the state. In western and central Massachusetts, they got even more snow. Here in Boston, over 20 inches, but out there, just about 40 minutes away from the city here in Boston, uh, oh, 35 inches. I counted more than a dozen communities in the state that got over 30 inches of snow, and there were plenty others that got over 20. You mentioned some of that coastal flooding. That's a big issue happening here. One of the big towns we've all been watching throughout the course of this storm is situate. They've had an inch in some places in situate, several feet in others, and also a seawall breach in the Marshfield area. Greta? Um, any idea what's going on in Nantucket? I saw that they had terrible, almost hurricane level winds there and that little island. Uh, any, any update on that? Really an incredible story out there. They were literally knocked everybody out of power out on the island of Nantucket. But as of this afternoon, uh, the authorities were saying they were feeling pretty good about possibly being able to get folks back online there within 24 hours. We know they made some progress, uh, but there are still a lot of people without power, not just in Nantucket, but also on Cape Cod. They were also hit pretty hard as well. Uh, but it, it had been 36,000 up at the height of the storm. Now it's closer to around 20,000 people. So they're making some progress. But frankly, Greta, it's still snowing at this point in time. Forecasters were wrong about New York City, but they were absolutely right about Long Island, which took it right on the chin, according to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Uh, this area here in Uniondale got about 18 inches of snow here in central Nassau County, and you combine that with the high winds and the bitter cold, and it made driving extremely treacherous, including the roads that we were out on today that were recently plowed. It was still very icy with layers of snow and ice in the blizzard brought greater misery to the east end. The town of Orient on the North Fork got at least two and a half feet of snow, and most of Suffolk County was blanketed in 17 to 24 inches of the dry, drifting snow, including the Hamptons, which prompted the governor to reallocate 77 plows and hundreds of additional assets from across the state to help speed the recovery. And despite the lifting of the driving ban in New York and New Jersey and Connecticut, officials were st still encouraging people who were digging out their cars not to drive them today because the roads were so dangerous. In fact, the governor of Connecticut said that there were roughly 15 accidents during the storm. He says there would have been hundreds and hundreds if they hadn't closed the roads. Greta, it is uh, 24 degrees tonight, but it feels like 10. And they say the temperature will remain uh, below, zero, below freezing for at least the next week or so. This snow and ice isn't going anywhere for a while.
Time now for, for some Monday morning headlines. The nationwide flu epidemic claiming another life, this time a kindergartner from Nevada. Five-year-old Kira Driscoll died after coming down with a strain of the virus that wasn't part of the typical flu vaccine. She is the 56th child to die this season. In Alameda County have been put on home isolation after possible exposure to measles. Officials say it is just a precaution after the children visited the Kaiser in Oakland where they may have come in contact with an unvaccinated child with measles. This comes as Disneyland is asking people who are not vaccinated for measles to avoid its Anaheim amusement parks. 70 people are sick in that outbreak including several Disneyland employees.
All right, let's move on to another topic. I want to ask you about Yemen, uh, which, you know, basically is a hot mess now. And the, the, we played a soundbite of you on Friday, and I confess to Charles Krauthammer, who I mentioned earlier, he, he, he laughed at what you said. And here's why. The folks who are now in control of Yemen used to be a, a, a U.S.-backed government. We, we liked them. We were at least satisfied with them. But these are the guys in control now. Death to America. Death to Israel. Victory to Islam. So the American people may not be feeling too great about the new people in charge of Yemen. You were asked about these folks, the Houthis, uh, last week, and here's what you said. They do, uh, on occasion, you know, chant death to America and that kind of thing. So it's not as if they haven't expressed anti-American sentiment in the past. Well, obviously, Matt, as I mentioned, we continue to assess our security needs every day, uh, regardless of what's been said. But it is important to note that just this week, mm -hmm. they stated that was not their intention. So, so you, you, I mean, you know the follow-up, but you're taking them at their word that well, they no longer mean the chance? Megan, first of all, I know you could never play all the back and forth we have on Yemen in the briefing, but we've been discussing this probably hours last week in the briefing. I don't want to get deep into officials. Yemeni politics. I just want to ask you whether you are actually saying that we should just trust this group because they now say, never mind all that chanting about death to America. Well, I think our actions are make clear that we don't just trust. I think it was important to note that that was something that was stated publicly. Now, there's so no question the death there's to been America a great stuff. deal of unacceptable violence. There's been a great deal of unacceptable violence, rhetoric, everything you've said. There's no question about that. But we're in a situation that is very tense. It's fluid. We, we have to see what's going to happen on the ground in Yemen. We don't know yet what's going to happen. With two officers shot after a police swearing in ceremony in Minnesota are expected to be okay. You can hear the shots on the video from the city council meeting. A group of officers was leaving a city council meeting. This was in New Hope, Minnesota. You can hear it there. Get down, get down. Just outside of Minneapolis, when the gunman opened fire on them, two officers were hit. Others shot back. At approximately 7.15 hours, when the swearing in ceremony was completed, the officers left the council chambers. Um, at that point in time, an adult male engaged these officers with a handgun and began firing at them. Two officers were struck by the gunfire. Other officers were able to return fire, subsequently killing the suspect. Well, after scrambling for safety, the council members were escorted out. No word yet from authorities on a possible motive.
parents will do everything they can to make sure their children are healthy. But tonight, a mother is facing charges in Hamilton County after prosecutors say she intentionally made her child sick. Nine on your side, Bryce Onslinger is live at Children's Hospital with the disturbing new details in this case. Disturbing is right, Bryce. Yeah, that's right, Tanya. Prosecutors say that a West Virginia mother injected her son through his IV with feces, and they say it happened here at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. These are pictures Candida Flutie posted on her Facebook page. They show her son in the hospital being treated for Hirschsprung disease, a congenital condition that affects the large intestines and makes it difficult to pass stool. Flutie's son, who we're choosing not to identify, has gone through a number of surgeries in his home state of West Virginia and here at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. It was at Cincinnati Children's Hospital where prosecutors say Flutie injected feces into her son's IV to keep him sick. Prosecutors say the injection of feces caused the boy to spike a fever. Today, Candida Flutie was indicted on charges of felonious assault and endangering children. Well, some new information into a bizarre and heartbreaking case. Jury selection is underway for the trial of a mother charged with murdering her five-year-old son by poisoning him and then documenting his declining health on social media. Lacey Spears is accused of intentionally feeding her son salt at toxic levels. Terrifying discovery. On a San Francisco sidewalk, police are opening a suitcase and finding human remains, parts of a dismembered body. Trace Gallagher, live with the breaking details on this huge mystery now. Trace, what do you know? Gretchen, it was a roller bag suitcase found near a pile of garbage in the Mission District in San Francisco. That's a very up-and-coming technology area where the Twitter offices are now located. The call came in first as a suspicious package, which happens all the time, and the fear there is usually there's an explosive inside. But this time, there were dismembered body parts inside. In fact, the remains were so mutilated, the medical examiner had to be brought in to determine if they were human or animal. Police also found other body parts nearby but for now it's unclear if they're from the same victim. Clearly though, this is being investigated as a homicide and police had to shut down several blocks in the area to protect the crime scene. Investigators are now reviewing surveillance cameras in the area that might show, they don't know, someone rolling the suitcase, dumping it out of a vehicle. They did bring in someone they thought was a person of interest, but it turned out to be a false lead. And so far police either don't know or they won't say anything about the race, the gender or the age of the victim, and it's now up to the medical examiner to determine the cause of death. Someone who walked by said that it smelled like dead rats. Police, as you might imagine, are still scrolling through missing persons reports to see if they can find a connection there. The person talking lives at Sunchase Apartments and is close friends with the 61-year-old woman who was stabbed a few doors down early Tuesday morning. She doesn't want her face shown, but tells me the woman's daughter, Katie Nichols, is to blame. She's just not emotionally stable and, you know, does the best that she can, but needs quite a bit of help. She says after the stabbing, Nichols took off with her young daughter. And I almost kind of hope that she does come back through here so that we can get the authorities to to get her. Not five minutes later, it happened. Nichols walked up to the camera. The satanic cult in this city has been casting satanic spells on me for four or three, four days. I'm exhausted. I came home. I found out that my mom was the ringleader and she was cr trying to kill my daughter. Nichols tells me she had to act because her mom was putting curses on them. I had to kill her. She was going to kill both of us. 
She was so powerful, I had no idea. I had no idea that my mother was that powerful. Deputies say Nichols' mother was stabbed in the neck, chest, and stomach and was rushed to the hospital for surgery. When I left, she was still breathing. Well, that's good. I stabbed her three times and she should have died. She was still breathing. And I don't know what happened to her afterwards and I don't know where they took her or what exactly happened, but she was the Antichrist. She did not die. Nichols says afterwards, she and her daughter hid out. We went in my car and we ended up in a little rural area and we just waited for the sign to, that it was safe to come back. The feds say they can spy on our cars, take pictures, and track exactly where we're going and how. And they want to expand the program throughout the United States. Thanks so much to you, the federal government, from the bottom of our hearts. This is all according to the reporting of the Wall Street Journal newspaper, which also reports the Justice Department has already has a database tracking millions of cars on major U.S. highways. The Drug Enforcement Administration started the program back in 2008. It's always about drug enforcement. They did it to monitor drug traffickers along the border with Mexico. And what did they do? They expanded, as the government tends to do. The database used license plate readers that collect data about cars' movements in real time. The program's high-tech cameras can reportedly take photos of drivers and passengers. And the images are apparently clear enough for investigators to identify suspects or innocents. The paper reports more and more law enforcement agencies are now using the DEA system and that investigators have tapped into the track, it tapped in to track suspects in cases that have nothing to do with drugs, like kidnappings and rapes. A Justice Department spokesperson tells Fox News the feds, quote, limit who can access the database and all of the license information is deleted after 90 days. Isn't it?